Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name is Rodney Dupree and today with me I have Kara Erickson and she's gonna help me cook. It's our second class so we got some really cool stuff for y'all today. We're actually cooking pasta, we're doing brown spaghetti, we're doing spices and herbs with a little history, we got homemade mac and cheese, we're doing crab salad, we got stuffed jalapenos, fried snickers and fried oreos. Y'all hang on, Cajun Living and Cooking's fixing to start right about now. Tideline, trout line, sitting on a pot line, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana Line, trap line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens, that's how we live, and it sure feels fine. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, y'all, we got some cool stuff for y'all today, but I got to tell you a little bit about my helper here. Miss Kyra Erickson. Yes, sir. And you are a teacher. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your cooking skills. Uh, well, I teach second grade at Carver Primary, so that's the rep in my school today. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, you can probably tell by my accent I'm a transplant, so I don't have a lot of experience with Cajun cooking. So in North Louisiana, you know, our recipes are more from like the Appalachian tradition. Oh, so kind of yeah, chicken and yeah, dumplings, yeah. Ozark pudding, that kind of thing. We'll so have to swap recipes. I know, we will. We <laughs> will. Look, but it's all good. It's all good. I moved down here in 2000, no, gosh, 1998. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I've been down here a while. So I guess I'm kind of an honorary Cajun, I guess. Even though I don't sound like it. <laughs> <laughs> you do a little. I'm you, getting there. Getting I'm there. getting there. I'm trying. But uh, what we're going to do, and I'm going to let you take off and get going here. Yes, sir. What we're doing is uh, we got three different pasta dishes, and uh, one of them is a brown spaghetti. The other one is a crab salad, and the other one's a homemade mac and cheese. So we're doing a couple different ones for you here. Uh, I did a little study on pasta, and as a matter of fact, there is probably 350 different sizes of pastas. So it's really crazy. And what is a pasta? A, a pasta is typically made from an unleavened dough of wheat flour mixed with egg or water and formed into sheets or other shapes then cooked by boiling or baking. So there's a wide variety in pasta and there's two kinds. It's dried and fresh mm -hmm. pasta. Um, a little history uh, and it's actually folklore. Um, what Way back, somebody said that Marco Polo had brought pasta from China really? to Italy. Yeah. I well, the, it, he didn't do it, but he gets credit for mm -hmm. it. Italy, uh, China already had the pasta going. It's, Italy gets famous for it. Right, right. But um, th that's a little craziest thing right there. Yeah. The oldest pasta shape is actually lasagna. Oh, that's, so the big flat. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. That's interesting. And some of the history in the 14th century, pasta became popular for its easy storage because it could be stored on ships as they were coming to the new mm -hmm. country. So it was only so many things. It took uh, somewhere around 90 days in the beginning, I think, for them to come to here so you could keep that stored. But uh, here's a little tidbit for you yep. Italians eat 60 pounds of pasta per person per year. Oh my goodness. Where Americans only eat 20 pounds of pasta. I was going to say, I think I might be more toward the 60. I'm not going. Ah, ah. Pasta's good for you. It's good. Pasta's good for you. Uh, spaghetto is the singular word for spaghetti. Oh, so I never I, knew that. So if you only took one out, it's a, a spaghetto. A spaghetto. Never now tell knew me that. what you got here. We got, we, right. we just have ball and water. Mm -hmm. Ball and water, a uh, teaspoon of salt. We put in there and I just broke the spaghetti in half. Uh, some of it in thirds because we don't want it too long. Right. And I just got it in the bowl of water. And we're going to let it go about nine, ten minutes al dente. Sweet. Yep. And then yep. you're going with the fusilli. Mm -hmm. The fusilli. Which is a uh, spiral, which I like to call it. Yeah. It's a lot easier to say than fusilli. Ah, ah, Sounds funny saying fusilli. 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 Uh, we're boiling over, Mr. Rodney. Uh oh. All right. We're going to turn that stir. one down a little yeah. bit. Yeah. We're going to give it a stir. 
kind of calm it down a little bit. There we go. That only happens when everybody's looking. Of course. You know, you if you watch a pot, it don't ball. I know. I was looking at you. That's why I boiled. There it goes. That's why I boiled over. You, you know, before machinery, uh, pasta was kneaded by foot. I hope, the, I hope it was clean feet. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> Some of the pasta history. Right, we still going. We might need to turn it down just a little bit more. That's wild pasta right there. It is. I'm going to turn it down for you. Yeah, Let's it's see. It's going to be Cajun pasta. Let's keep the lid off. How about that? Yeah, we're going to do that. Anyway, we are trying to get some pasta going and talk about pasta. And uh, what we're going to do is get these done and we're going to start on our brown spaghetti. So uh, as you get the pasta going, mm -hmm. we're going to get it balling. And then we're going to start lining things up with a brown spaghetti. So y'all hang on. Ooh. It's going to get better. Yeah. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com Fred's Bar on the River has something for everyone. Open seven days a week. Football on the big screen TV, pool tables, golf, darts, and the new boat launch bar. Ladies night on Wednesdays. Thursdays is open mic night. Karaoke on Fridays with DJ Rocky. Live bands on Saturday and Sundays. The Giant River Bar is air-conditioned and ready to book your company's events or your Christmas parties. Come out and enjoy a good time on the river. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking has the largest selection of grills and outdoor cooking supplies in South Louisiana. Let our team help you select the right equipment for your cooking needs. Our unique inventory of cookware is second to none. Whether you are looking for a new cast iron or ceramic coated pot and burner, a new charcoal, gas, or pellet grill, or anything to help you with your outdoor cookout, come to Galvez Hardware because good food brings people together. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, y'all, we back. And me and Kara's... Uh Got us some noodles balled up ready for the, what we got going today. There but uh, go. I'm going to let you get started over here. All and right. uh, what, what we got going, and, and basically she's got going, and I'm just talking about it, is we're making a brown spaghetti, which we're using pork and smoked sausage. And normally I would use Porsche's smoked sausage, but um, got some other sausage today. And uh, the pork I actually um, starts as a pork chop. And uh, what I do is cut the fat off and cut it in cubes. I, a lot of people make small bite-sized pieces. I like bigger pieces in there when I'm eating. I want a big old hunk of meat on there. So I cut them up. It's roughly three pounds of pork and one pound of sausage. So, so we're gonna get this going, then we're gonna put some Cajun seasoning. Also, we call it Uncle Larry's, Larry's seasoning, which none better. And a little salt and pepper. We're gonna get that going, and then we're gonna get going with the Trinity. Over we, here on the other side, we got a little onions, celery, and green bell pepper. Which is a cup and a half of each one. I got them in a crazy container, but I've used that container before. And then as she gets that going, we'll put the garlic in there. And that's gonna be about two tablespoons of garlic. Now at home, you probably wouldn't use two skillets. You would, as um, soon as you brown the meat, you would take it out, save a tablespoon of oil, and then put the vegetables in there. And uh, once we brown those, we will add, you, you, you actually end up with everything in one pot because we got the spaghetti made. So I'll tell you a story about the brown spaghetti. I was probably 18, 19 years old and my grandma made this and um, I said, what you making? She said, brown spaghetti, you know, and I don't think they had invented pasta laia at that <laughs> point because this is early 70s and I called it brown spaghetti for a long time 
and then they created pastalaya and then they actually uh, jumbagetti was the next thing they started talking to it so um, that's where that comes from from my grandma the recipe before the pastalaya people even got going but um good recipe i cook it at the camp a lot because it's a one pot meal and uh, it seems to work well uh, you can make big or little put as much pasta lie up put as much pasta in it as you want but uh, what she's got going now we're gonna let her start browning the meats and browning the onions but uh, I want to talk a little bit about spices uh, I said we we're gonna talk about spices and um, uh, spices uh, spice is a seed a fruit a root a bark or other plant substance primarily used for flavoring or coloring food not to get confused with an herb which are leaves flowers stems or plants used for flavorings or as a garnish um, okay. spices are sometimes used in medicine religious rituals cosmetics or perfume production so hmm. eau de toilette that's de somewhere toilets. in there you know um, a little bit of history on spices and, and I want to tell you there is over 200 spices and as a matter of fact, some of the trees can have two different spices on the tree. They may use the fruit or the leaf, mm -hmm. and it'll be, uh, and in different countries, they even call it different names also. Okay. Um, the spice trade was developed in Asia around 2000 BC, and their main trade back then was cinnamon and black pepper. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I couldn't think of cooking now without cinnamon and black pepper right so you might have to trade horses or something for some cinnamon or something mm -hmm. back then hmm. um, the Egyptians used herbs for mummification uh, their demand for exotic spices and herbs helped stimulate world trade of spices and and uh, I guess before they were finding gold or they were back then also but mm. they were finding spices too hmm. <laughs> That's really um, interesting. About a thousand BC, uh, medical systems based upon herbs could be found in China, Korea, and India. So, a, a, a little bit of spice knowledge for you there. And, and, and I got another tidbit for you. Okay. The Romans used cloves in the first century. Mm -hmm. uh, in here we go back to almost modern, but in 1499, the Portuguese navigator Vasco da Gama had sailed to India and discovered the pepper market. So that created, that's right before 1400, but around that same time, Christopher Columbus had just come back from the New World and told investors that spices were available there. So hmm. they, they wanted to invest money and find these spices, you know? And um, I'm gonna throw you a little couple more facts because I think you got a little bit longer on there. Yep, I do. Peppercorn has been used for over 4,000 years. And I, 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 I'm not a big peppercorn Fan, you know, mm -hmm. I don't use a lot of peppercorn in right. my life. You know, I, I don't know if I need to use more, but that 4,000 years seem like I should. Uh huh. Saffron is the most expensive spice. I have heard that. I've heard that. The little strings, they come in little yes, strings. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. And each plant, I think, only has, and it has to be hand picked. Mm -hmm. And it's like, like the you only of get the a flower, I yeah, think, isn't it? It's only yep. a couple from each flower, so. I don't remember, but it's, it's, it's crazy price. And that's what's in uh, your yellow rice, the mm -hmm. saffron. Yeah, yeah, used in a lot of uh, Spanish dishes, I think. Yep, yep. yep. So uh, looks like we're getting a little color here on our, on our vegetables. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the garlic. And we wanna add it a little bit later because if you cook garlic a little too much, it gets bitter. Exactly. Yep, so we're gonna add it a little bit. Cool. All right, I got two more facts for you. Okay. Chinese five spice is named after five flavors in your mouth, not after five spices. Oh, wow. It's named after sour, bitter, salty, and pungent. Hmm. And my last one to that. tell you. Okay. India contributes 75% of the global spice production. Oh, wow. It all comes from India. Huh. Yeah, because so, I so, know they use a lot of curry and... Yeah. Yep. So cool. Um, Very interesting. All right. So she's brown, and tell you what, we're gonna get this browned up, and we're gonna start putting it together. So y'all hang on, it's gonna yeah. get better. All right, Carol, we got it smelling good in here. It smells wonderful. <laughs> like I said, at home you wouldn't have two pots, but uh, right. for everybody out here, we're using two pots. So what mm -hmm. she's doing now, you just put the roux in. I did. 
Got which the roux is, going. Which is with the onions, the celery, the bell pepper, and the garlic. Yes, sir. She's going to get those going. After that, she'll be adding Cajun seasoning. Little Uncle Larry's. And some golden mushroom. Mm -hmm. I would like to use a little bit of brown gravy. We also use some paprika, some fresh cut mushrooms, and some chicken broth in there. So while you get those going and get them bringing back to a boil, I want to tell a little bit about our sponsors who's sponsoring the show today. And they're actually sponsoring the cooking class. Number one is Diaz Tire. Uh, talk to him today. He come in here, he was working on something, come got some screws from the hardware and uh, they busy down there. And if you need anything done at DS Tire, you call him up, it'll answer the phone, and he'll get you fixed up down there. Leader's Fried Chicken, hadn't been over there lately, but I was riding by, it was Tuesday or something, place was packed, y'all. It's the best chicken you ever wanted to have. Best in the past. Best, I gotta say it, it's the best, best chicken. And Capital City Produce, from what they brought us, it's really cool. The onions, the bell peppers, everything produce. If, if you don't have Capital City in your store, go talk to the owner and get it. Because some of the stuff they bring here is just incredible. Some of them strawberries and peppers and mm -hmm. uh, you, you can't go wrong with Capital Very City fresh. Produce. Now, you're getting everything going in there mm -hmm. and it's really smelling good. Yeah, so I just added the mushrooms. I added both of the gravies, or the, the cream of mushroom and the gravy. Now I'm gonna add the stock. What I'll do is, uh, I, I like the golden mushroom because it don't take some of the color off of it. Uh, golden There's mushroom. spaghetti, yep. there yep. you go. Yep, yep, brown spaghetti. And uh, we were talking about that a while ago. I, and, and you know, like I said, I'm not from here, so I'm not familiar with, with all of the Cajun cooking. And so I was wondering, you know, I've had, I've had pastalaya, but I've never had it with mushrooms. So is this, this one makes it brown spaghetti instead of pastalaya? Well, the difference in there is when, when brown spaghetti is invented, you actually cook the pasta with the gravy and you shut the lid and everybody comes in one pot. Right. So my grandma, back in the day, before they invented pastalaya, she always cooked the noodles on the side mm -hmm. and then you would add it back in there. I gotcha. So, okay. you know, you, you call it what you like, you know, but uh, that's the way we grew up with it. So, the, the, what we got going now, she's actually to a coming to a bowl. Yep. And what you'll... Let the mushrooms cook down a little bit, let them soften up. And then we, since that pot's bigger... Mm-hmm. And this has got some good color. Oh, it's yeah. Nice and brown. Yeah, I like good. that. And Easy. that... Uh, Pork chops and sausage is, uh, I think. You can't go wrong. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. The new completely renovated Fred's on the River Food and Mark located at the Port Vincent Bridge is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans style press po' boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever, but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Corral fish season is coming soon. It's time to move into the 21st century with the new high-performance cookers and super boilers. With our new state-of-the-art technology, the 120-quart pots come to a boil in under 7 minutes and the return boil in under 2 minutes. This fast return boil is key to perfectly cooked crawfish, all while using far less propane. Now, no more mushy crawfish using the old, outdated slow boilers. Monogramming Unlimited specializes in corporate and small business embroidery on a wide variety of clothing and accessories like shirts, jackets, hats, bags, and much more. Our screen printing department is perfect for you. A very affordable way to advertise your business, club, team, or event. We also handle business cards, promotional items like pins and huggies, trophies, medals, plaques, banners, and signs. No job is too big or too small. Call or come by today. Porsche's Sausage, located in French Settlement, is bringing back that old country smokehouse flavor and customer service. 
This third generation family, dating back to 1946, has all your favorites. Hall cracklings, beef jerky, head cheese, and smoked sausage. Like the old days of Donald Porsche, our on-site butcher has all your specialties. Smoked tasso and hocks, andouille, meat sticks, and Uncle D's Bayou Blend. Come and experience Porsche's sausage. It's a wonderful thing. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Carol, we've been waiting for this part. I've been waiting for this. But we got to tell them about what we already got. Okay. All right, so we got our brown spaghetti. It's delicious. Very good, very good. Um, we got our stuffed peppers, stuffed with uh, crab, uh, grandma's mac and cheese, and then we got our crab salad that's been chilled. Very good. Everything's delicious. I, I think everybody in here done ate about everything we done I cooked I think so. They're here. working on the crab salad now. So, the, I, But they got to save room. Got to. They gotta got save to save room. Hey, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I, oh, my goodness. I had to do that before we get going. All right. Let's tell them what we got. <laughs> All right. So got a batter. Gonna, yep. Which uh, you can make your own, but we use some Bisquick. And it's two cups of the Bisquick. A cup of milk and two eggs. Mm -hmm. The recipe is on the back. It's just the pancake recipe for the Bisquick. We took a Snickers and stuck a stick in it and froze it. So all you do now, while we got the all heating. Mm -hmm. We got it at 350. Now I'm going to use my fingers for this part to get it all battered up real good. That's all right. That's, and that's what, that's makes what it I good. did earlier. And then look at here. I don't mm. know. You don't need all that in there. You want some. You want some. Mm -hmm. And what you can't do is let it touch the bottom. Okay. So, so take it from me. All right. We're going in. Do we're going into the grease. We're going into the all grease. All right. We're going in. So we're going to do it about a about a minute. We're going to let it fry, and I'm going to hold it. I'm not going to let it touch the bottom because I want to keep that good batter on there. I'm going to try to get that. I'm going to turn it over too. And, so and it brown. Sure. This is very, very quick. That goes very quick mm -hmm. in there. And uh, But you got to freeze them. If you don't freeze them, the Snickers might blow up oh, or yeah. it'll melt away. Melt in there, yeah. Definitely. But uh, don't use your french fry grease for this either. <laughs> or your shrimp <laughs> grease. Yeah. <laughs> So it's probably starting to brown a little it's brown on one a side, and, I, and just I'm make turning sure I get it a little, little yeah, I'm it and over. getting it going in there. And this is very quick, y'all. Very, very quick recipe. It's starting to brown, so I'm just gonna keep my eye on it till it till it browns the, all over. Where we were investigating the recipe, they were saying two minutes. Wow. You know, so maybe a minute and a half, kind of split the yeah, difference, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So it is starting to brown, so I'm going to leave it kind of turned over till it browns a little bit on this side, too. It's Have you ever crispy. had them? I've never had them. They're uh, not healthy, I would say. Well, that's all right. That's, that's, all right. that's my favorite kind. So you share it. You don't have to eat a I don't know about one. that. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> that's the hard part right there. The less there. healthy, the less I want to share. They'll be going in. Look saying. over there. <laughs> Where's my Snickers? The less healthy, the less I want to share. <laughs> so this one's mine. Just letting y'all know. <laughs> All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it on this side a little bit. Look at there. Mm-hmm. And, and, and as we sit in here talking, two minutes is a long time. It is. And when it we is. tested it a while back, two minutes went by so fast, it wasn't mm -hmm. even funny. But see, to me, it's taking forever because I want to taste it. Exactly. You know, well, this. while you're browning that, I'm going to have to say one more time to our cooking class sponsors, DS Tar, thank y'all, Leaders Fried Chicken, thank y'all, and Capital City Produce, thank y'all. Couldn't have, couldn't have done this without y'all. And it, it gets everybody here is getting to eat too, so it's what's really neat about it. I know it's a win win. So, it's as you're browning these, yeah, you can see it's starting yeah, to get a little brown. You got something going, yes, now. indeed. We're cooking with grease, literally. <laughs> we really grease. cooking, we really with, cooking grease. with grease, yeah. So, I'm gonna kind of, I think you just there you we go, got done. We're gonna I drain think you're it, ready. yep. Gosh, All right, now that's the that's the Snicker. Now mm -hmm. this is the Oreo. I'm gonna dump okay. them in there for you since my hands are already dirty. All righty. I think I got enough batter on them. Okay. We're gonna do a one. 
And a two. Maybe it'll stick. You might have to push it up. Look, they jump. Oh, they start to float. Up. Okay. Look at that. And there's another one. Oreo. Fried Oreo. Mm -hmm. Crazy. And you know, since it's got pancake batter on, it could be breakfast. There you go. You know? Remind me of Bill Cosby with there. the cake. I know. There you go. It's got egg. It's got milk. It's everything you ever wanted everything. in the breakfast. There you go. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> now, something, uh, while you're getting those fried mm -hmm. up, something we've seen that people tend to like. Look at that fry there. Brown. And the chocolate's melting. And it's starting to melt in and out. A little Ooh. it broke a little bit on it, but we all right with that. So what you That's do awesome. on that now is uh I'd have to say a little powdered sugar. Mm-hmm. And uh what does that say? Caramel. 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 Some people say caramel. I, I <laughs> so you would do a little bit of dribbling one trip mm -hmm. if you look the other way, you don't know. I'm a little the bit way. I'm on that there. Way. I'm not gonna <laughs> powdered sugar and caramel on a fried snicker with pancake batter. Perfect for breakfast. Man, I tell you what, yeah, we, we somebody's living it. right, huh? Yes, you're right. <laughs> yes, indeed. So now these have been in for about a minute. So, and about sometimes minute. you have to flip them. Mm-hmm. And uh, what we'll yeah, use we is the knife, right? Hey, here. That works. Something to, that works. Let's see. The yeah, ingenuity it's browning there we on go. the other side. The ingenuity there. They taking bets to see who gets to eat this Snickers first out there. Well, we cooked it, so we're gonna eat. We're gonna hide it too. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Who yeah, thought so of an? Ahead. I never thought of that when I was a youngster about Oreo. I think they can fry just about anything. I think I saw um, on the cooking channel one time they fried butter. Now, I wow. don't know how they went about that. I, I don't think I'd ever attempt it. <laughs> well, but I they tell fried you what, butter. probably be something good. for people to pay attention to on our last class we're having mm -hmm. we're frying some ice cream <gasps> I'm gonna be here for that one I'm serious I'm gonna be here for that one all right Look so I'm gonna that. turn these over and make sure they get like a little bit of color Oreo that's good stuff that is good stuff you, you think you could put powdered sugar and caramel on an Oreo I think we would have to I think you better I agree the, the Snickers would uh think he's the boss if you don't mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at that, huh? Right, so I'm gonna drain these. Hilarious that mm. we can fry. Oh, things and they're crispy. Like that. They're crispy. I hear it crunching on the side mm -hmm. of the, on the side. Won't you set them yeah, on here good. for me? All righty. Oh, it smells like the fair. It smells like the. It does. It smells. This reminds I didn't think me of the fair. That. Yeah. The state fair. It does. Look at there. Huh? A little powdered sugar. And Mr. Caramel, mm -hmm. look at there, look at there, look at that. Kara, I had a good time today. I did too. I we, did too. I we, learned uh, a lot. You rocked it. Well, thank you. We thank you. I learned a lot from you. Cool. And uh, I'd like to thank everybody else out there for watching Cajun Living and Cooking. And we'll see you next week.